Hey guys, Keith from Kegland, and today we're talking about the new Poly Phoenix Bubble Capper Plate Kit. So this is now sold as a whole kit just like this to make it really easy to purchase off the website. Now, depending on how many kits you purchase, will depend on how many bubble capper plates you want to use in your Poly Phoenix still. So uh, it does include this uh, tri-clover clamp as well. So literally all you would have to do is basically add on how many of these you want to buy. Typically, if you're making, you know, whiskey or rum or something like that, it's somewhere between, you know, two and seven bubble capper plates is the most sort of common options probably the you know three four five is really the most common really um, but it all comes down to what your wash is like and you know how you want to basically turn that into your uh, finished spirit and how much you want to essentially separate and fractionate uh, that distillate when you're taking it out of the columns. Now, if you've got a really fantastic uh, wash, there's a very good chance you may not want to use any bubble cappers at all. You might come straight out of here and condense it and then collect it and do your cuts immediately, um, just as like a very, very conventional type of pot still. Totally fine if you want to do that. Now, with these bubble capper plates, I will mention that you just add them like this modular in, in a modular fashion to however many you want. I should just say there's just one last little thing on the bottom bubble capper. If you want that to actually be used correctly, you've got to add this elbow piece. So that's uh, this KL37921. So the last bubble capper plate, just so there's a vapor lock here, this will fill up with a little bit of liquid and then that'll allow this bottom bubble capper plate to fill uh, to the correct height in this chamber. So that's something you have to do. Now, one thing you could do is if you did admit that, that would just make this essentially this chamber at the bottom redundant. So it would be forming the vapor lock for the one above, but just wouldn't work. So just remember to buy that. It'll save you having to buy essentially one more bubble cover plate kit and it's a bit cheaper that way. Um, the other thing is I want to talk a little bit about why our bubble capper plates have been made with this particular type of design uh, because it has a number of advantages over other bubble capper plate designs that you see out there in industry. Now you're probably asking what is a bubble capper plate and what's the point of it? Well, the whole idea of a bubble capper plate is to increase the interaction between the gas and the liquid. So what we wanna do is have this gas or vapor coming up into the, uh, in, in the column through a chamber and we want liquid to form inside this chamber and for those th two things to be bubbling through each other, so you get that maximum interaction between those two products. Now, a bubble capper plate technically could be as simple as a simple piece of mesh. So let's say I got this copper mesh that we've made this bubble capper plate out of. Let's say I've just got the mesh only, didn't have this cap on top or any of that, but just a piece of mesh. Now, if I got that mesh and stuck it in this column, as you can imagine, you know, I would get vapor coming up, condensate sort of dripping down like that. And, you know, if I was to manage that power setting, just perfectly, I would get just enough vapor coming up the column that it fills up this chamber and the liquid would be suspended inside the chamber above that plate, you know, at a perfect depth. But as you can imagine, that is a really difficult balancing act and has a very narrow power band in order for me to keep that bubble capper plate right at that exact depth. And that'd be very, very difficult to manage. Now we tried a lot of different designs of bubble capper plates out there, a lot of competitors products. And honestly, a lot of them were just really, really hard to use, which is one of the reasons why we came up with this new Poly Phoenix still design uh, with this bubble capper plate. So the whole idea of this bubble capper plate that we've designed is the way it works is it basically dictates how high you can fill up inside these various different chambers. And that is dictated essentially by the height of this little bit of tube, uh, this uh, copper tube here. So what I mean by that is I'll, I'll assemble this for you. It's pretty simple. You've got one part here. So this is uh, one side of the bubble capper plate with a, uh, a silicon seal, which just sort of wraps around that top plate. Then I've got this one with the mesh on it, uh, or the cap, I guess you might call it. This one just sits straight on top like that. So as you can see, it's sort of loose and can rattle around. It can just sort of uh, go in position like that. And then when you put this together on top of the Poly Phoenix chamber, it's held captive. So it can't really go anywhere like that. Now, because of this particular design, irrespective of what power you've got, this will fill up and it's dictated by uh, this down coma height here. So this tube, uh, basically the down coma, it has a hole at the top and the height of that is how it will always fill up. So if I operate this still, 
I've got a massive range of powers. I can go right down to 500 watts and I can go to many thousands of watts and it will still fill perfectly every single time because the height of which that liquid is filling inside each chamber is dictated by the height of that tube. This is a very innovative um, you know, bubble capper chamber design. Look, Dom has been working really hard on this one and he's done an absolutely amazing job. And we've tested it on various different uh, power settings and it just works so well is so easy to use that I highly recommend giving this a crack. We've used many, many other commercial ones, uh, you know, pro cappers and stuff like that. But the reality is they had such a tight bandwidth that, you know, if you went up from 2000 watts to, you know, two and a half thousand, all of a sudden, you know, you wouldn't get it fill up at all on the plate, all the vape would just escape. And then if you would drop it like too low, then everything would collapse and just fall down into the chamber below. So, you know, we found that frustration has, you know, basically forced us into having to rethink all the bubble capper designs, which is why ours looks really quite different to any of the other ones that are out there. So as you know with a bubble cap and plate, one of the primary objectives, as I was saying before, is to get maximum interaction between the vapor coming up the column and then also the distillate falling down the column. So you really want a lot of small bubbles bubbling through that liquid so we can get that you know, maximum interaction. Now the way that we've designed this bubble cap and plate is so I've got one main part here. This is the bubble cap and plate, I suppose, with the down coma. Uh, and what we've got is a U-shaped uh, triclover seal. So it's got a uh, kind of like a normal triclover seal, but it's got a U shape in it. So it basically can fit over uh, this copper plate like that. Now this is all solid copper, it's not copper plated or anything. But yeah, so that's the main part of the plate with the down coma. And then we've got, I guess, the cap here as well. So this just sits on top there like that. So if you look at the two, you can see that, um, you know, this particular type of design dictates the height of the liquid filling inside this chamber like this. So this is how the bubble cap is used. I should say when we pack them in the box, they're actually packed like this. So just remember that they've obviously done that to save space in the box. So just remember to turn it upside down. They're used actually like that in actual use. So as you can see, you know, we've got the down coma. So liquid will fill up in this chamber and then flow back down this down coma and come down this tube. But then the vapors on the other hand, they will basically come up through this central hole here through the disc and because of the way that this is shaped, we've got this uh, you know, perforated disc here with the cap. Um, so the vapors will come through here and because they've got nowhere else to go, they'll come out sideways and then basically come through all these perforated small holes. So small bubbles will come through here so you get maximum interaction um, with that gas and then the liquid which is sitting in the chamber. Now, the other thing you can do, which gives you even more flexibility, is you can actually extend this tube. So let's say you know, you're know you not happy with the height of this down coma and you say, look, I want this chamber to fill up even more than that. Well, what you can easily do is even just extend it like uh, by getting a piece of silicon like that, for instance, put that on top. And now what you'll get is the liquid in this chamber will fill up to another, what, 20 mil higher. You can just keep making this longer and longer if you really wanted to. So as you can imagine with these bubble capper plates, the more plates you stack up, the higher the ABV you're gonna get. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, well, can I use this for making neutral vodka or you know, making like a neutral spirit that I can use for gin? And really it's not the most effective tool for the job. I think it is a very effective tool for doing stripping runs, mind you. So if you're doing a stripping run, definitely using some plates are a good option because they're also very easy to wash. If you get a lot of packing with lots and lots of surface area, sometimes washing all that stench of a you know a, a quick um, you know a stripping run can be a bit of a pain in the bum so I think these definitely have an application in that regard but if you're trying to make you know pure neutral spirit one of the problems with bubble cap and plates is you have to use a lot of bubble cap and plates to get up that up to that 96% azeotrope that you're really aiming for and really if you just get a packed column with something like the SPP you're going to get there much more effectively so there's that now Look, another little cool thing I'll mention is I've been sort of experimenting with this, which works pretty well as well. Um, this is a way that you can also bypass the chambers because what you'll notice is when you start the boiling process with your whiskey wash or whatever in the boiler, you'll notice that you get very high ABV to begin with. And then as you get towards the end of the run, you'll get lower and lower ABV and it starts to taper off quite low. So if you're getting sort of those low wines, you've still got some really good flavors coming out of there. 
Um, sometimes it's worth sometimes actually, you know, controlling the amount which is going through the bubble cap of plates to boost that ABV slightly. And this is one option that you can try to give that a crack. So what this is, is you can see we're using these half inch uh, outputs here and linking some of the chambers together. So if I was to start the still off with, let's say five plates and bypass a couple of them and effectively only using, you know, two plates, some of the, you know, the, the, the plate will still load anyway, but you'll get more than 50% of the vapor exiting out here and going to the next plate. So it's actually kind of bypassing that whole plate. And then as your, you know, ABV starts to you know peter off towards the end you can give it a little bit of a boost by tweaking this and then just you know let's say for instance you've got some slightly undesirable stuff just starting to come through towards the end of the uh the distillation process maybe those tails are starting to sneak through you can actually then just twist in one of these Hoffman clamps, shut that off, and then force all the vapor through that bubble capper chamber. So you've got a degree of control in stuff like that, but look, that's just another example of how these Polyphenix bubble capper plates are really configurable because of all the ways you can interface with each chamber. Anyway, that's it. If you guys have got some awesome ideas in different configurations that you've got or ideas you wanna try, definitely put them in the comments below. If we get a lot of requests for you know some cool method that somebody else has come, come up with or some new configuration, with an offset head or something like that, definitely let us know. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, subscribe. Guys, we're just about to do a whole lot of other distillation videos. I've got actually some whiskey wash just sitting over the other corner of the room here. So I'm gonna start processing that through this still and do a video on that one. So subscribe so you get notified of all the new videos that land. Make sure to hit that bell icon. So that little bell bottom right hand corner, hit that as well when you subscribe. So you get notified when new videos land and join our Facebook homebrew community group. There's also distillers on there too, sharing tips and tricks on how to use all this kit. So that's it and see you guys next time. Bye.